when they were adjusting this mic, I was afraid it was going to hit me in the forehead. Uh, well, thank you, everybody. My name is Joseph Rocha. I am running for state senate. Um, <clears throat> this is a, this is a little different. I actually am coming straight from my grandmother's hospice, so I will do my absolute best to uh, get through these uh, next couple of hours. But um, I talk a lot about my grandmother and my grandfather. Uh, they were Mexican immigrants who worked the fields and factories of Woodland and Davis um, and started their family here. And naturally, I am the product of their sacrifices and their hard work. Uh, I didn't expect this to happen, but I, I spent the night in Arrowhead, made my way here today. I can think of no other way to honor those sacrifices uh, more than to stay on the campaign trail and continue to fight uh, for the values um, and the policies that we're fighting for. So, <laughs> thank you. I, another thing I'm very proud of is to be a Democrat, um, a party that is dedicated to, um, to the people, to workers, to families, uh, to the values of empathy and compassion and service. Um, you know, a big part of my candidacy as a, well, I have a rare bio for a Democrat, right? I'm running as somebody who is a former Navy and Marine Corps veteran, a former law enforcement officer, and a former prosecutor, which frankly makes it very difficult for uh, the GOP to run against me. Um, and we've seen them sort of ripping their hair out as they really can't nail a attack against me because it just doesn't fit. Um, and so what I hope comes through both my candidacy and hopefully my election will be that we can take back this um, nuts, ludicrous, outrageous uh, idea that the values of service and patriotism or that something as hallowed as the American flag only belongs to a few of us, um, but rather that belongs to all. I want to stress how important you all are, right? I understand that Alpine is not the highest concentration and the deepest, darkest blue population of my district. <laughs> but I am here because your votes matter as much to me as any other votes. And I thank you because you all are the only ones who can really convince your family, your neighbors, um, your coworkers that uh, this campaign matters or that uh, I'm the right person for the job. So I thank you for being here today. Um, we talked a little bit about my bio. So um, my mother raised me until I was seven in Woodland, which is just north of the capital. She struggled with addiction and she lost me when I was seven. <clears throat> she actually lost me in a high-speed chase leaving the, uh, leaving the capital, Sacramento, right? I came down to Southern California to live with my father. Conditions didn't really get that much better, but I am grateful for um, his sacrifices. And uh, I never really looked back to Sacramento, um, ever, until we launched this race. Uh, and now you all, the voters, are about 20 days, if not 19 days, away from receiving your mail-in ballots, and only a few weeks away from deciding if you sent me back to where I came from, uh, but this time as a senator to fight for you. Um, so you will see a thread that is constant in our platform, in our values, and in what I stand for um, that speaks to that. Opportunity, right? I am first generation community college, college, law school, and officer in the Marine Corps. And I always start with community college because I value that so much um, and would certainly be a huge partner and champion for the community college system. I went to City College, I went to University of San Diego, and then I went to law school in San Francisco. Now, when I was 17, I had to leave the home, um, and I survived in high school my senior year as a dishwasher. So um, my journey of earning the labor endorsements in this uh, race has been incredibly uh, cathartic. Um, it, I learned very early the value of hard work, and part of the reason why I'm running is to ensure that hard work still stands for something. Um, I am sick and tired of seeing people having to go off of their retirement back into the workforce. Uh, we hear a lot about my generation, millennials, living with their parents, but after knocking thousands of doors, I'll tell you that what I see more often than not are millennials who have to take their parents in because their incomes and uh, what they have saved up for retirement just isn't making it anymore. I joined the Navy. I was a bomb dog handler in the Middle East. Um, I did explosive detection for two and a half years overseas, and then I was discharged under the former Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. So right now, a lot of individual rights are under attack, and you will hear either from incumbents or from candidates that they will fight for your individual freedoms. I have the track record to show that. I stood up against the Department of Defense, 
the Department of the Navy, the Department of Justice, and, um, and we won. Uh, my case ruled on National Intel unconstitutional, and I promised the entire time that I was advocating that I would return to the service given the opportunity, and I did just that. I served seven more years after the repeal of the National Hotel as a Marine Corps officer, a tremendously difficult and conservative space itself, um, and got out as a captain. I served as a judge advocate, and that's where I served as a prosecutor. So we had our first, I ran because I saw the fabric of this country falling apart, right? Um, I could see everything that I had spent those 17 years fighting for, putting my life in harm's way overseas for three years, a total of 17 years of, uh, of service from when I got in into when I got out. Um, and I saw all those things falling apart. Um, so, um, so a lot of people see this as a job, and to me I see it as a calling the same way as I did my enlistment when I was 18. We had our first forum uh, just last week, and frankly, I was quite shocked at how unprepared um, and how disinterested the senator really was, uh, both in the race, the forum, and the issues. Um, I say, it appears as though he thought he was gonna howdy duty his way through it, and these issues are just too serious. I will not allow my opponent to lie about his record on common sense gun reform. I will not allow my opponent to lie about his record on choice. Um, or on his record of actually being for the people, right? So prescription drug medications. He voted against reducing the price of prescription drug medications. We often think of our seniors when we think of this issue, but it also is as important for a child who is life depends on insulin. Um, and he voted against California cutting out big pharma um, and producing its own insulin. Why? Because the three top backers of my opponent are big pharma, big oil, and the insurance corporations. I have really big ideas for veterans, and I'm happy to get into those details later. A lot of people ask me, what are we going to do about this veteran issue or that veteran issue? I like to challenge them and tell them that I want to ask, what are we doing for the service member and their families while they are on active duty in our communities, right? And in doing that, we will significantly reduce the number of issues we see within the veteran community. That's not to say there's not issues in the veteran community. I want to uh, expand and cover gaps for health care. I, um, I want to see our veterans get uh, a free education, which would allow them to then push that GI Bill to their spouse or to their children, creating generational wealth and freeing up that family to both put down roots here so they become members of our community or start a small business, um, uh, small business or what else? Let's see. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Thank you for the clapping, man. Uh, <laughs> So that frees the family up to, um, to start a small business, to stay here, um, or many other opportunities, right? Um, there's absolutely no reason why we're still taxing your pensions. I think we're the only other state in all 50 that still tax military pensions, um, and we can do more about your property taxes. Um, here in Alpine alone, I know that uh, your, your, your VFW has a nice sweet spot on a hill. I love the VFW and the American Legion. I'm a member of both. Um, but your American Legion struggles to pay its rent, and that's a, an easy thing that we can fix at the state level with a small grant. So. <clears throat> I don't know where I was on time, I made the timer and then it just escaped me. Um, hot, I'm fine? You're fine. Okay, all right, all right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this entire candidacy is about making the state work for you, about making sure that we're fighting for workers. Um, I don't know how politicians uh, get away with, um, you know, being funded by and simply going up to either capitals to protect special interests so that they can continue to grind us into the ground. But I have both the lived experience and the professional experience to ensure that this seat that represents a million people and that affects 39 million people is no longer squandered by somebody who doesn't want to do the job. I recently said off the cuff, you don't have to be a good legislator to be a good person. But if you're not a good legislator, go be a good person somewhere else, right? This is a job and no one else gets to be bad at their job for 21 years and still collect a paycheck. This person who regularly votes against um, giving other people a leg up has been getting a tax funded paycheck for 21 years um, and has voted against term limits and for increasing their pay. So. <laughs> I could not be more proud of what we've built. We've built this thing up to be one of the most competitive races in the state of California. Um, I am, I think what keeps me up at night most is now how many people are counting on me. And you can tell I'm giving this everything I've got. And I'm very happy and honored to be here and look forward to your questions. Thank you.